Hello! One foggy morning last week, Nick and I did a little road trip to another country town in Victoria about an hour's drive away. It was a mighty 6 degrees Celsius at 10 o'clock in the morning when we left. A bit chilly, but it is still winter, so can't really expect it to be too hot. It was quite a nice drive through small country towns, and I really love how the trees look in the fog. It's so pretty, especially out in the country like this. Yep, we're definitely in Australia with those kangaroo crossing signs. Eventually we made it to our destination, the small town of Kyneton in Victoria, and I was on a mission to find a particular art store that I've been wanting to visit for a very long time, but it really is a long way from home and I just never managed to get there. It was much easier to go from Dad's place than it is to go from Melbourne and have to cross the really busy city. At this point the GPS was indicating that it was somewhere up here on the left hand side. There it is, there it is! And of course all the parking spaces were full so we had to go around onto the side street and walk back. But here we are at the Alchemist Artist Supply Store and Archival Framing. Store owner Bonnie very kindly allowed me to film in her shop. So let's take a look around. It's a really gorgeous store with so many pretty pieces of furniture. I'm just panning around so we can see the store in its entirety and then I will wander the aisles in a bit more detail. Look at all of those Daniel Smith paints. Tubes of paint always look so beautiful hanging in rows like that. I really love this mannequin. I think that's a fantastic decorative piece to have in an art shop. I just love that paint palette. Now let's take a closer look at some of the shelves. So this first one has a whole bunch of different sketchbooks and I just love that set of apothecary drawers on the bottom left which is just disappearing off screen. But these sketchbooks made of stone paper, I've not seen these ones before. I'm quite curious to try one because I totally need more sketchbooks. They also have a whole bunch of things from Etcher, which is really unusual. There's only one other store that I've ever seen any Etcher products, but Alchemist had heaps of stuff in stock. All of their watercolour papers and blocks, watercolour starter kit, watercolour postcards, and right down the bottom, even the perfect sketchbooks. I am amazed to see those in an actual physical store. How cute are their ceramic watercolour palettes? I actually do have one and I will get it out at some point. My version is the one on the right with the tiny wells. And here's another little view of the perfect sketchbook. These are the A5 sized versions. But they even have the larger limited edition ones. Then there's a few other different products up here, including some Daniel Smith walnut ink. But speaking of Daniel Smith, let's go and have a closer look at these paints. So they have their half pans and then what looks to be their entire range of watercolour paints in 15ml tubes by the looks of things. So pretty. Ah, oh, I just could look at that all day, couldn't you? <laughs> and the next shelf down has a bunch of watercolour grounds and mediums and there's also Indian Cardi watercolour papers. Here there's a rack of Nitrum charcoals, soft sponges for pan pastels and some Tombow Mono Zero things, a whole bunch of other erasers, and in the window display, which is really hard to film because the light's pouring in and silhouetting everything, is a nice rack of Blackwing pencils and all sorts of accessories for those. I love the wooden pencil boxes that they come in. They're packaged so wonderfully, and Blackwings are lovely to use. I have quite a lot of them myself, actually. There's also a whole load of German pencil sharpeners over here. I found more Daniel Smith items, paint palettes and dot cards, Pigma fineliners, and some interesting looking etcher boxes there that we might see a little bit later. And some Sennelier inks down the bottom. Alchemist also has a lot of Sennelier products, and this is their display for those, starting off with pastels, oil pastels on the left, and soft, chalkier pastels on the right. Oh, they're so pretty to look at as well. Moving across, we've got some liquid charcoal by the looks of things, some pretty artworks hanging on the wall, and a few other little mannequins and some Prismacolor Premier pencils, Conte pastel pencils on the left, 
and all of the Prismacolor boxes in the front there. There's that massive 150 set. And next to them are the Faber-Castell polychromos, all of the singles in the display boxes there, plus the sets. It's in tins below. And down here we have all sorts of papers, drawing papers by Lana, Art Spectrum and Stonehenge. And now my favourite part are the Sennelier watercolour tubes. How gorgeous are they? Oh my gosh, I love them all. And next to them are also the half pans that they come in, so it's really great that you can just buy them all individually. They even have gouache, which I'd never seen before. Here's a closer view of the half pans. I'm glad to know that Alchemist stocks the Sennelier paints because they're not easy to get in Australia and now I know of another place where I can find them. There's all of the Sennelier inks down the bottom, their abstract acrylic paints. Gosh, it's such a big display and I really like seeing them all together. And then we have some golden open acrylics. There's a really large set there, which is quite nice. And then a huge display here, which looks like the entire range of the golden acrylics in the different kinds that they have. Golden paints are really beautiful, and I would highly recommend them if you're looking for a professional artist quality paint. I particularly like the open acrylics, which are slow drying, and they're just so much easier to use. Some really pretty Harbin calligraphy sets on this little display, and some colour wheels. And then we've got Derivan Matisse, which is an Australian brand, and this is all of their acrylic paints, so that's a big range as well. And some nice palettes down the bottom. A lovely display of brushes by Raphael. They make some high quality brushes. I've used a few and they're really good. So Alchemist really does seem to stock the high quality products. They also have these Etcher brush sets. I really wanted the one on the left with the pale rustic brush roll case, but sadly they were too out of my price range for this day because I'd already picked up a bunch of other things. They look really nice though. And then we go to the really expensive watercolor brushes, the Issa Bay ones. I've never tried these, but I think they are a very high quality and they are pure Kalinsky Sable and pure Squirrel. So you going to be paying a fortune for those. <laughs> and down the bottom are the larger pieces of paper, the single watercolour papers which I often tend to get. Now we're at the counter with the lovely display of some of their fancier items and up the top are these art toolkits once again. They're not easy to come by in Australia but I've now found two places that sell them and Alchemist is one of them so I had a little look around there. Look at that tiny one! I didn't know that existed. It's called a Danny palette. It's so cute! <laughs> and I do have a set of those Raphael Le Voyager brushes which are really nice. Along the back wall is a huge display of Langridge, which is a Melbourne-based company. They make a whole load of pigments and all sorts of paints. And then in these wonderful apothecary-looking cabinets, they had so many jars of dried pigments. The Sennelier ones are on the right-hand cabinet there. And then into this one are the Langridge pigments. I have some of these. They are excellent quality. And I will show them eventually in a video. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. There are more that I would like to get, especially the co teal but that one's pretty expensive. They also have small jars of pigments in different collections. There's also a bunch of different traditional arty things. I have no idea what most of these things are to be perfectly honest with you but I'm sure some people do and in this cabinet are gorgeous glass mullers. These are used to mix pigments in with binders and I have one somewhere in my collection. They're pretty expensive but they are really lovely. I will talk about these in a future video as well. And the last cabinet had some empty tubes to put your own handmade paints in, which is pretty cool. And last up is this wonderful cabinet full of potions and exciting things. So after all of that excitement, we decided to stop at this place for lunch. I had a cheesy toasted sandwich because I could not resist that. And Nick had a huge sausage roll and salad. And then we headed back to Clunes. The sun had come out and it was quite a pretty drive coming back. So we were in Clunes for a few weeks taking care of my father because he'd fallen over and broken his hip. He's doing much better now, he's still recovering, but we have actually headed home in the meantime. I got home just a few days ago and so I'm still trying to recover from all of that trauma that we've had in the last few weeks. But yay, I'm back in the studio and I have a wonderful bag from the Alchemist full of art supplies. So let's get into it. First up is a book about art in particular the history of Sennelier and how they came to be. 
they're a very old company and I guess they have a pretty colourful history. <laughs> so Nick actually saw this and he decided he wanted to have a read through it so he bought it for us and it's got some really pretty page spreads in here so I like it for the pictures. <laughs> Nick can read the history stuff <laughs> but it's interesting. I will definitely have a proper flip through this when I get some time. I think this book is actually out of print as well so it's quite a rare one and it just looked appealing so we ended up with it. Another book to add into the library. I particularly love these two red pages. Moving on to the actual art supplies, we got some German pencil sharpeners. This one in the packet is to sharpen mechanical pencils and those grippy ones. And this one here is a long point sharpener, which I picked up for my pencils because I like to sharpen my graphites into long points. Might as well test it out now. I've got a black wing pencil here and this sharpener is wonderful. It was so sharp and it was perfect for achieving a lovely long point. Look at that, beautiful. Definitely a high quality sharpener. And I did remember to put some paper down to catch all of the sharpenings onto, hooray! <laughs> they also had some free Sennelier booklets, so we picked another one up. I think I have one somewhere, but I could not tell you where it is, so it's good to get a new one. Just showcasing some of their products. That box on the right hand side is so gorgeous. And then all of their colours that they have in the watercolour range. I have this entire set. They are really beautiful and I love them so much. Bonnie, the store owner, also gave me a couple of freebies in the form of Daniel Smith dot charts. So on the left hand side are the luminescent colours and then on the right is the Jane Blundell palette. I'd be curious to swatch that one out and see what colours she likes to have. She's quite a well-known artist. And then of course you know I had to get it, that tiny little art toolkit demi palette. They come in such cute little bags. It took me forever to get this thing open though. That string is on there really tightly. Finally managed to get my fingers into it. Let's pull it all out and see what was inside. I have looked at this once before. It was wrapped in a cardboard sheath. I cannot get that back on there for love nor money. So I just left it in the bag. And then the actual palette itself. Gosh, it's tiny. It's got the art toolkit stamped on the back and on the front is a nice brushed black metal. Let's get this little thing open. Struggle, struggle. I can never do these things on camera. Honestly, I can open them easily any other time. But finally I got there. There's a little card inside and there are the 12 tiny little quarter pans. For comparison, here is the original art toolkit. You can see there is a considerable size difference. The art toolkit is the size of a business card holder and I've been using it quite a lot. It is such a mess at the moment, but you can see some of the paints are getting well used. I'm not sure what's going in the Demi palette yet, but moving on, I got some Etcher Lab items because it's just much easier to buy them in person. I always like to buy things from physical stores rather than online, but this is a watercolor block with 50% cotton paper. I'm not sure how much I'm going to like it because it's not 100% but I thought I'd get a small pad of it just to try it out because I'm very curious. I've heard reasonable things with these papers. They do package them very nicely. It is in a box and then it's wrapped in plastic inside so it took me quite a while to get this thing open. Once I did it comes with a top layer of black paper that I struggled a bit to get off but here we go finally. You can see this is a cold pressed paper Hopefully a bit of that texture is showing. So I guess I'll test that out in a future video and we'll see if it's any good. Next is the item I specifically wanted from the store, the premium watercolor postcards with 100% cotton paper. I've annoyingly managed to ding the box in transit. Not sure how that happened. I only noticed when I was unboxing it right now. Mwah! Why are these things always so hard to open? After a bit of struggling, I eventually got this piece of paper off and now we can look inside. Ugh, that's so annoying. Urgh. <laughs> so this is a pretty big box. It holds a hundred postcards apparently. Let's take a look at them all beautifully wrapped in some plastic here and I had to of course struggle to get these out as well but happily the plastic bag was one of those easy open ones. You just peel it off from that adhesive and then I could get into the paper and check that out. I pulled one out and it looks exactly like the Etcher Sketchbook watercolor paper, which I'm happy about because I really like that paper. This is the cold press texture. There's also hot press. I have not tried the Etcher Sketchbook hot press paper, which is why I decided not to get that because I wanted to go with something that I know is good. And it's got the postcard stuff on the back. 
The paper's quite thin, it's about 230 GSM, but it surprisingly holds a lot of water for all of that. I decided just to pull them all out of that plastic and just sit them in the box like that. It's much easier when they're loose, so we'll be taking a look at these at a future date. I'll do some paintings on them and we'll see how good they are. I have high hopes for these. And of course there had to be an impulse buy in there. Remember those mystery etcher boxes I was showing in the tour? That's what they are! The premium fountain pens! Let's get it open! I had seen these when they'd first bought them out and I was thinking yeah they're a little expensive especially when you have to pay for the shipping which is included in the price but it makes it a lot more pricey. When something is physically in front of me though I am far more likely to buy it because then you have instant gratification of having it right then and there. And eventually I managed to get the box out, a bit of a struggle once again, and my fingernails are so janky at the moment, oh my hands are really dry because it's winter and I just really need to do a manicure of some description. But getting back to these lovely pens, it's been ages since I bought a fountain pen and I just thought these ones might be quite nice. They have an extra fine nib and a fine nib. I think this one is the extra fine. The pen casing is either a really sturdy plastic or it's melamine or something. It's got a nice feel to it. There's that nice fine nib and these are ones that you just fill up the ink well inside so you don't have to worry about putting cartridges in which is what I want because I want to use my bottled inks. This is what it looks like inside, that's where the ink goes in there and I was trying to work out how to put the ink in there but you'll see a bit later that I did figure that out eventually. <laughs> Let's put this one away and take a look at the other pen which is a semi opaque grey colour, you can see through it a little bit and once I get it out of this plastic we can take a closer look. It's very simple but I do like it, it's a nice design on it and once I struggled a bit to get the lid open, it's always the way with new pens. Here we can see this is a fine nib if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there's the F on it and it's got the little Etcher Llama on it as well. It opens up the same as the other pen and I did figure out that the way you would draw the ink up is right at the end of the pen there is a twisty bit which pops out a little way and then you can spin it to suck the ink up like that piston mechanism. I can't wait to draw with these, I need to decide which inks to use in them and I'll do a more in-depth video on these pens down the track, actually putting some ink in them and drawing with them. I like the look of them so far. And here's everything that I bought from the Alchemist shop, I'll link them in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up if you did and click the subscribe button and I'll see you all again really soon in my next video. Swatch you later, bye!